I know a lot of people say this about a lot of tournaments, but over this weekend, Genesis 9 may have become the greatest Smash Ultimate tournament of all time. As the years have gone on, the level of play has gotten higher and higher. Punishes have become deadlier, parries have become essential, and players continue to push the meta to its breaking point. This Genesis was a culmination of the last four years of Smash all condensed into one of the most ballistic top eights to ever be played. Maybe this weekend you're playing Fire Emblem Engage. Maybe you're on the East Coast and you weren't willing to stay up to 3am to catch Grand Finals. Or maybe you watched the whole thing and you're just here to relive the moments. Whatever the case may be, I'll be your guide to all the greatest hits. Welcome to the Genesis 9 Tournament Recap. Starting off, we have the return of Hot Set Alert. If you missed the entire weekend and you want to watch the best sets before they get spoiled to you, these are the ones to watch out for. You might notice that's a lot of the same player, but trust me, it's worth it. Last video, I suggested that whoever won this tournament out of the top four seeds would be crowned the best in the world. With Tweak and Aquila coming hot off first place finishes, it seemed likely they'd take their momentum into this weekend. However, with this top eight, MKLeo proved that the crown never left his head in the first place. Going mostly Joker once again with the sprinkle of Byleth and Pythra for flavor, Leo grabbed his fifth Genesis title across two games. What's so scary about this time though, was that he wasn't playing his best the entire bracket. No, you could physically see MKLeo get better with each set he played. He squeezed out a game 5 against Sonics before being sent to losers by Mudes. There, when he was down 2-0 against Light and on his final stock, something snapped. All of a sudden, everything started connecting and he finished the game with this insane gun into forward air off stage. From that point onward, it was lights out. Game 4 Leo rose from the grave with a vengeance as he almost three-stocked the Fox. With a closer but still convincing Game 5, it seemed this Joker was in its prime, turning Leo from a top player to THE top player. And he took this mentality straight through Grand Finals. It's his use of conditioning that's the key here. Joker's empty hop is extremely dangerous with all his insanely quick aerials that lead into pretty much whatever the player desires. This scares a lot of people into shielding, and Leo abuses this fact to set up grabs that put his opponents into more guessing games. There is truly nothing scarier than being above MK Leo. Now that I say that out loud, that sounds like a sex thing. Um, anyway, all this talk about our champion makes it sound like the runner-up Mudeace was a victim. Uh, yeah, no, Mudeace was a few edgeguards away from one of the most prolific runs in Smash history. Number 39 on the alt rank and seeded 18th, Mudeace played his heart out. We've seen glimpses of his greatness at other tournaments before. At Let's Make Moves Miami, he sent a cola to loser's bracket earlier than the Steve player ever had been before. At Super Smash Con, you know, the tournament where Onin 3 0'd MKLeo, he was the only person to bring the Steve menace to a game 5. Sit down and let me explain what a disgusting run this was to get to second place. First, he beat the best Game & Watch Meister in a matchup that's said to be 7-3 in Game & Watch's favor. Next, he took on Best in Japan Akola, continuing to show his mastery in the Steve matchup. He then casually smacked the reigning champ of Europe, Gluto, in a 3-0 sweep to get into top 8, played one of the best sets of Ultimate ever against the protagonist Light, and was the one to send Game 4 Leo to the grave in the first place. If you were paying attention, you'd notice that Mute took out the number one player in each of the major regions of the world. Okay, yeah, Tweak is better than Light right now, but let the cool statistic be cool. Mute Ace has shown his potential to become one of the very competitive top 10. It seems that chronic hand problems have been the reason for some of his shaky performances, which makes his showing at Genesis all the more impressive. I think Mudeace made everyone a fan this weekend, and if we're lucky enough, we can see him become the most esoteric bitch in the sewer. Sorry, I just love this image, he posted this on his Twitter, and I have no idea what it means, but it's hilarious. So, what happened to our other top seeds, Tweak, Spargo, and Nicola? Starting with the projected number one, Spargo got upset by Sonics right before top eight. Down in Losers, he stopped Ouch's four-game win streak and got revenge on Akola for LSI, only losing to Light in an incredibly close game for fifth. 
Yeah, you heard that right. Akola got 7th. It's not his worst placement, his run at Seibugeki 12 ended at 9th, but hearing Akola not place in top 4 is surprising. He got upset by Mudes, which is nothing to be upset about, and beat Kola, I mean Salt 1, and T to make top 8. I think the most tragic of these losses has to be Tweak. Once again, right before top 8, he played one of the closest sets of the weekend against Light. In the final seconds, Light seemed to look a second into the future and read the roll in, sending Tweak straight to the blast zone. Tweak himself said he didn't really recover from this loss, and that showed as Gluto 3 owed him, leaving him at 7th. I'm gonna be upfront here, there's not really a story to be worried about. Sure, these three prolific players didn't make their seed, but they're definitely going to grind and come back better. As the level of competition keeps rising, there's no doubt that Tweak, Spargo, and Ecola will grant us some more fantastic ultimate to watch. Speaking of Fantastic Ultimate, can we talk about Light in third place? I feel like his name keeps coming up because he was part of five of the most jaw-dropping, heart-suffocating, esoteric bitch in the sewer sets of the tourney. His stamina was almost unmatched. He took multiple top 10 players to game fives, and most of the time, he won. Spargo looked ready to take the set after three-stocking the Fox in game four, but he kept the sleeves covered and he was able to fire back with a dominant game five. Sonic's was the same story. He looked helpless getting edgeguarded over and over, but in the end, he kept up with the speed demon by kicking him in the face. Although he lost to Leo and Mudes, which keep in mind are the first and second place finishers, we pretty much owe him for setting the Joker into top gear. Light was one of the most entertaining players this weekend. His fox is electric, and as his sets show, extremely volatile. You really never know when he's gonna win until he jumps out of his chair and tries to break the stage. Going to the other speedster now, we have the fourth place Sonics. I did say to get used to him because he'd be showing up in more top 8s. Not only did he show up, but he played incredibly well. Sonics took out Kurama and dominated Spargo to get his ticket into top 8. There, he was almost able to close out against the winner of the tournament before getting timed out and turned into our favorite statistic. He then camped Gluto in a grueling 31 minute set. Now, I will say, this was definitely not the most exciting thing to watch. I personally viewed Kony attempting to beat Mario 64 before the set ended, but still, you need to remember that Sonics is playing just as hard as everyone else on that stage. He's one of only two Sonics in the top 100, showing the mental fortitude required to compete with this character at this level. And his rushdown against Light proved that he has the skill to scrap with you. Even if you don't like him, you have to admit, He's got a great case for top 10. The last of the top 8ers was Gluto. He did his thing pretty much. He played well, showing a mastery of Wario and teasing us with the wolf in the Sonic set. I don't really think Gluto needs a secondary for his bad matchups. He was a nair and some bad gas away from beating his bracket demon. His most impressive win was probably the fact that he beat Mars, because we need to talk about Mars. I have no idea what drugs they pump into Mars before he walks into the Genesis venue, but it cannot be anything legal. After getting upset before Top 64 by Moxie, Mars stomped Nido Sharp, Big Boss, Leon, Siski, and Da Buzz. Everyone's favorite content creator played in a way that transported you back to Genesis 7. Just watch this clip in the actual French dimension. <laughs> <laughs> ZSS is just a character that makes the other player look so lost. Mars was just one game away against Gluto from getting into top 8. This gives Gluto an upset factor of a lot, because I was very upset at this development. If Mars plays like this again, he might be able to stop MKLeo from getting the double Genesis 3-peat. Okay, this video's running a bit long, I better go catch it, so let me run through some other great runs and upsets rapid fire style. The combination of Chase and Leon upset 7th seed Riddles. This caused a discussion of whether or not it's appropriate to laugh at someone who threw their controller. I don't really have an opinion either way, but I will say this was one of the most respectful rages I've ever seen. 
fellow Canadian Soar was able to upset Meister in Losers. The Green Goblin of Smash Cosmos was sent to Losers by Vendetta. Cosmos then proceeded to win five sets in a row against Shogun, Bark Wizzy, Quandale, Dingle Lingleton, Karama, and Zamba. And to cap everything off, Da Buzz. He didn't do anything crazy, but he kinda got moves though. Hey, sorry for not uploading for two weeks. Uh, I went back to college. If you're new, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps me a ton. Bye.